which helped to win the Second World War. The bombs were tested in the Fleet Lagoon before they were used in daring raids on three German dams in 1943. Well, to commemorate the 50th anniversary next year, Weymouth and Portland Council decided to raise and restore the bomb. Shelley Hunt reports. The bouncing bomb was one of the most ingenious inventions of the Second World War. Based on the principle that a spinning stone will skim across the water, the 5,000-pound bombs were developed as the only weapons capable of destroying Germany's massive Mona and Ada dams. Inventor Barnes Wallace tested his early prototypes at the fleet. Many disintegrated on impact. But the one discovered lying at the bottom of the estuary is thought to be the only one remaining. The bouncing bomb must be one of the most significant pieces of equipment that are related to the Second World War. So we thought it was really interesting that it was actually tested and um, perfected here um, so that we could do something about it for the future. Teams from the Royal Engineers and the Royal Navy have been preparing for the lift for two days. This morning we've just continued with the excavation around the bomb to try and get access around and underneath it. Um, and this morning we're just finally, uh, before the helicopter comes in, just trying to get a cargo net around it so the helicopter can lift it in the cargo net. There was one small hitch when the bomb toppled over underwater, but eventually the Sea King managed to haul the giant sphere out of the fleet. Even though it's 49 years since it was dropped there, some of the locals still remember the testing. We saw this Wellington come along and drop this thing which bounced along. We had two or three goes at it. And uh, of course we didn't realise what it was all about until months after when we read about the dam busters and we realised that that was what the bouncing bomb. Bob probably never dreamt he'd get this close to the invention which changed the course of the Second World War. Fifty years of erosion on the seabed has taken its toll. A third of the bomb has disintegrated. But everyone was delighted with the success of the operation. It was never certain they would be able to get it up or in one piece, but uh, to see it coming up like that was, was tremendous. The bomb will now have pride of place at the Portland Museum, where experts plan to restore it. The removal operation was a delicate one. The one thing historians don't want it to do now is to bounce. Shelley Hunt, Coast to Coast, Weymouth. Do you know, I'm so old, I can actually remember seeing the black and white version of the Dam Busters really? at the cinema first time round. Somebody who's far too young it. to remember any of that, Gareth Evans with the sport. The bomb has been lifted from its resting place on the seabed off the coast of Dorset. The bomb was a three ton scale model of those used on the famous Dam Busters raid, and it's now going on show to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the operation. Nowadays, little disturbs the tranquility of the fleet. A five mile long seawater lake near Weymouth home of the Abbotsbury Swannery and Wildlife Centre. But half a century ago, this was a top secret base for wartime experiments. The idea was to attack German dams, which stored water both to supply and power the giant munitions factories on the Ruhr. Scientist Barnes Wallace invented a special bouncing bomb for the task, which was tested here. I always actually saw this from the bedroom window where I, when I used to live in the Coast Guard cottages, we were right behind us now. And uh, we saw this Wellington coming in low, and we saw this object come out and bounce along. And this occurred two or three times, and we had no idea what it was, but we were fairly used to seeing planes because there was an RAF range along there, and they used to machine gun and so on and so forth. And it wasn't until we read the papers months afterwards that we had some idea about what it was all about. Did it look odd, like a pebble skimming the water? Well, it looked, you know, we just couldn't understand what it was. It, it, it just bounced along, and we, we, you know, we just had no idea at all, we were completely dumbfounded by it. For two days, divers from the Royal Engineers have been in the water to first locate and then excavate the bomb lying in eight feet of mud. As they explored, they discovered the bomb was made of cork and concrete in a steel case weighing about three tonnes. Then it was placed in a nylon sling and at lunchtime lifted by a Sea King helicopter from the base at nearby Portland. This was the first time any of the soldiers had seen a bouncing bomb, and the successful completion of the operation was greeted with relief. As we were working, the visit visibility was reduced to virtually nil because of all the silt and the mud and everything. As you can see, well, it's not too bad now, but the mud and clay that stuck to it, once that was stirred up, it reduced the visibility right down. How did you clear the mud away? 
Originally it was with a shovel and with hands getting hands in, which was a bit painful at times because of all the mollusks and that in the clay. Is there a sense of history doing this? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. It's hard to explain, actually. In the week when Germany cancelled its own celebrations for the V2 rocket, there are question marks over the exhibition of a bomb, the final version of which killed over 15,000 people. But Weymouth Council, which suggested the project, says there's no offence intended. I think it's purely a historical event, um, like 1066, purely historical. And do you think there'll be much interest? I think there will. There, there is a lot of interest in uh, uh, the era of the Second World War now, uh, particularly as we come up to the anniversary of D-Day and so on. It's the 50th anniversary of everything coming up now, so it's, it's probably the last major anniversary that a lot of people that were involved will actually remember. So it is quite important, particularly for Weymouth. The replica bomb is now on display at the Portland Museum, where it'll be the centrepiece for a display commemorating the dam busters. Next year, the memory of this might be revived again, when it's planned to have a wartime mosquito aircraft fly over Chesil Beach to drop another replica bouncing bomb in remembrance of the raid, what it achieved, and those who died in its service. We play tribute now to the playwright William Douglas Hume, who passed away at his.